Pillarization Dutch, Verzuling, is the politico-denominational segregation of a society. These societies were, and in some areas, still are, vertically divided into several segments or pillars Zulin, singular Zuil, according to different religions or ideologies. The best known examples of this have historically occurred in the Netherlands and Belgium. These pillars all have their own social institutions, their own newspapers, broadcasting organizations, political parties, trade unions and farmers associations, banks, schools, hospitals, universities, scouting organizations and sports clubs. Some companies even hire only personnel of a specific religion or ideology. This leads to a situation where many people have no personal contact with people from another pillar. Austrian, Iraqi Arab, Israeli, Lebanese, Maltese, Nigerian, Northern Irish, and Scottish societies may also be considered to have displayed aspects of pillarization, historically or in the present time. <laughs> Netherlands The Netherlands had at least three pillars, Protestant, Catholic and Social Democratic. Pillarization was originally initiated by Abraham Kuyper and his Christian Democratic and Neo-Calvinist anti-revolutionary party ARP in the late 1800s. It was part of their philosophy of sphere sovereignty. The Catholic pillar had the highest degree of organization, because Catholic clergy promoted the organization of almost the whole life of Catholics in confessional institutions. Yet, the conservative Protestant pillar and the socialist pillar, which mainly consisted of industrial workers, were nearly as tightly knit. The Protestant Christian Historical Union formed in 1908 did not organize a pillar of its own but linked itself to the Protestant pillar shaped by the ARP. People who were not associated with one of these pillars, mainly middle and upper class latitudinarian Protestants and atheists, arguably set up their own pillar, the liberal or general pillar. Ties between general organizations were much weaker than within the other three pillars. Liberals actually rejected the voluntary segregation of the society, and denied the existence of a liberal pillar. The political parties usually associated with this group were the Free-Minded Democratic League and Liberal State Party Communists, humanists and ultra-Orthodox Protestants also set up similar organizations, however, such groups were much smaller. The development of pillarization in the Netherlands was favoured by the emancipation of working and lower middle classes on the one hand, and the execution of elite control on the other hand. The emancipation of the working class led to the establishment of socialist parties, trade unions, media, cooperative shops and collectively organised leisure activities. This full care of the socialist movement for its members existed similarly in other European countries. The emancipation of the conservative and often strongly religious lower middle class fostered the emergence of the Protestant pillar. While the Dutch bourgeoisie was rather liberal and adhered to enlightened Protestantism, a large part of the lower middle class embraced a more orthodox Calvinist theology taught by preacher and politician Abraham Kuyper. In 1866, Kuyper founded the Gereformeerd, reformed current of Protestantism that was both more conservative and more popular with ordinary people than the established Protestant churches in the Netherlands. Kuyper's worldview asserted the principle of «sphere sovereignty», rejecting both ecclesiasticism rule of the church over all parts of the society and statist secularism rule of the state over all parts of the society. Instead he argued that both had their own spheres in which the other was not to interfere. In 1879 he founded the Anti-Revolutionary Party as the political wing of his religious movement and core of the Protestant pillar. At the same time, new and old elites tried to maintain their control over the newly emancipated social groups. For instance, the Catholic clergy set up confessional unions to prevent Catholic workers from joining socialist unions. One reason behind the formation of Christian parties was to counter the feared rise of left-wing mass parties. Topic. Institutions by pillar The following table shows the most important institutions by pillar Topic. Depillarization After World War II during which even the Dutch resistance was pillarized liberals and socialists, but also Protestants and Catholics, began to doubt the pillarized system. They founded a unity movement, the People's Movement Nederlandse Volksbeweging. 
Progressives of all pillars including the Catholic resistance movement Christophore were united in the aim to renew the political system Dorbrock, breakthrough. But pillarization was ingrained in Dutch society, and could not be defeated that easily. In order to force this breakthrough, the Socialist Social Democratic Workers' Party, the left liberal VDB and the Christian Socialist CDU united to form the PVDA, a progressive party, which was open to all people. The new party did not, however, gain enough support under Catholics or reformed and the PVDA became encapsulated in the socialist pillar. Television broadcasting was also pillarized, but everyone watched the same broadcasts nonetheless, since initially only one channel was available in the Netherlands during the 1950s. During the 1960s the pillars largely broke down, particularly under political criticism from D66 and the group New Links New Left in PVDA. Because of this and of increased mobility, many people could see that people from the other pillars were not that different from themselves. Increased wealth and education made people independent of many of the pillarized institutions, and young people did not want to be associated with these organizations anymore. In 1973, two main Protestant parties, ARP and CHU, merged with the Catholic KVP to form the Christian Democratic Appeal CDA. They first participated in the 1977 general elections. In 1976, the Catholic trade union Nederlands Catholic Vakverbond (NKV) started to cooperate with the trade union of the Socialist Pillar (NVV) to merge into the Federatie Nederlandse Vakbeweging (FNV) in 1982. The pillarization of society has not fully disappeared, and many remnants can still be seen in the 21st century. Public television, for instance, is still divided in several organizations instead of being one organization. The Netherlands has both public and religious schools, a divide which is also inherited from pillarization. Moreover, some communities continue to behave as small pillars. As of 2014, although rather than forming the structure of society a pillar, this currently moves them outside the mainstream of society. Members of the Reformed Churches Liberated have their own primary and secondary schools, their own national newspaper, and some other organizations, such as a labor union. Members of several pietist reformed churches have also founded their own schools, newspaper and political party. Increasingly, Muslim immigrants in the Netherlands are also using the legal possibilities created for the pillarized structure of society, by setting up their own schools. <inaudible> Belgium Apart from having no Protestant pillar, pillarization in Belgium was very similar to that in Netherlands. There was also no general pillar, but a politically well-organized liberal pillar. In 1911, the British sociologist Seabohm Rountree noted that in Belgium, there is extraordinarily little social intercourse between Catholics and liberals, and practically none between Catholics and socialists. Politics enter into almost every phase of social activity and philanthropic effort, and it is the exception rather than the rule for persons holding different political opinions to cooperate in any other matter. Thus in one town there will be a Catholic, a liberal and a socialist trade union, a Catholic, a liberal and a socialist thrift society, each catering for similar people, but each confining its attentions to members of its own political party. The separation extends to cafes, gymnasia, choral, temperance, and literary societies, indeed it cuts through life. In both Flanders and Wallonia, societies are pillarized. In Flanders, Catholics were the dominant pillar, while the socialists dominated in Wallonia. Even though the liberals are stronger in Belgium particularly in Brussels than in the Netherlands, they are still relatively weak, owing to their rather small, bourgeois support, liberal trade unions are very small. De Tijd, a financial daily, is the newspaper aligned with the liberals, as its readership consists mainly of liberal supporters. However, a Flemish newspaper with historical liberal roots, Het Laatste News, also exists. Denominational many Catholic and a few Jewish schools receive some public money, although not parity of funding as in the Netherlands, so that tuition is almost completely free. Belgian universities charge more or less the same, relatively low, tuition fees. As a consequence of the language struggle in the latter half of the 20th century, the pillars split over the language issue, which turnout became the most significant divisive factor in the nation. Now every language group has three pillars of its own. The pillar system remained to be the primordial societal dividing force much longer than it was in the Netherlands. 
Only near the end of the Cold War did it begin to lose importance, at least at the individual level, and to this day it continues to influence Belgian society. For example, even the 1999-2003 Rainbow Coalition of Guy Verhofstadt was often rendered with the terms of pillarization. Political currents, which rose in late 20th century Vlaams Bloc, now Vlaams Belong, Groen, NVA, did not attempt to build pillars. Pillarization was visible even in everyday social organizations such as musical ensembles, sport clubs, recreational facilities, etc. Weakened in the current situation, many major social organizations trade unions, cooperatives, etc. still strictly follow the lines of pillars though. Topic. Institutions by pillar with their ethnic divisions The following table is limited to the most important institutions and it shows the current division of everyone by the three ethnic groups. Propors in Austria The Austrian version of Verzuling is the long-standing Propors doctrine a hypocorism for Proportionalität, German for Proportionality. This was first only within the politics of the Second Austrian Republic, but later degenerated into a neo-corporatist system of patronage and nepotism pervading many aspects of Austrian life. The Propors was created, developed and promoted by the two mainstream parties, the Catholic Austrian People's Party OVP and the Social Democratic Socialist Party of Austria since 1991 Social Democratic Party of Austria, both names with the acronym of SPO. This de facto two-party system collapsed with the elections of 1999, which resulted in the joining of the National Conservative Freedom Party of Austria FPO, whose political marginalization and that of its predecessor, the Federation of Independence VDU, was the main reason for the establishment of the Propors policy, because of their pro-German and individualist views. The Propors system arose out of the need for balanced, consensual governance in the early years of Austria's Second Republic. At that time, the country was consumed in an effort to rebuild the country after the devastation of World War II. Thus, the doctrine of Propors is intimately linked to the idea of the Grand Coalition, in which the major political parties, in the case of post-war Austria the SPO and the OVP, share in the government. See also Consociationalism Identity politics Millet Ottoman Empire Sectarianism Social Environment Sway IURIS Test Act Topic References Topic Further reading De Schauer, Chris 2001 Freezing Pillars and Frozen Cleavages, Party Systems and Voting Alignments in Consociational Democracies." Party Systems and Voter Alignments Revisited, Routledge, pp. 205–221 Post, Harry Pillarization, An Analysis of Dutch and Belgian Society, Avebury Van Schendelen, MPCM 1984, Consociationalism, Pillarization and Conflict Management in the Low Countries, Boom Christophe de Vogt, Histoire des Pays bas des origines à nos jours, Fayard, Paris, 2004. 